I think so far what we've done in, in food is to disturb everything. The natural balance, F1 seeds, and the, the fertilizers that we developed after the war from the gun factories using the same elements that used to make bombs. We now put on, on the fields to grow food for human beings and it's poisoning human beings, it's poisoned the system. Shipping food from all around the world. Water from France, people drink in Japan, why? Why spend all that gasoline and who's gonna pay for it? Our kids are gonna pay for it, or our grandkids are gonna pay for it. We have to decide what we're going to keep and what we're going to throw away for our kids. We're newcomers to this planet. We're still learning how to live here. And we're learning too slow at the moment. I think the next five years will be the turning point. You can see things, new forms, new structures, new businesses, new ways of making food coming out. People are starting to get the idea that it should be local. Seeds are the basis of everything we eat and the basis of everything that the animals that we eat, eat. Natural seeds are full of life. Man-made seeds are not full of life. Heritage heirloom seeds in Japan are disappearing very quickly. In the next five years, they will have disappeared unless we do something quick and drastic about it, very fast. 96% of soybean in Japan is F1 seed or filial one, which means it, it's just one generation. It, can, it cannot make a baby. The DNA has been altered inside uh, by man. So the life has been cut off. Soybean makes miso, makes soy sauce, it makes natto, it makes soy soup, it makes miso soup. It makes all the basic foods for the Japanese culture. So the culture has changed. The taste has changed. The nutrition has changed. We get a 30% increase in heart disease and a 30% increase in diabetes and a 50% decrease in fertility in males. You know, that's, that's the price we're paying for not eating real food. Farmers in Japan will not eat the food they grow. They have their own garden where they grow their own food from different seed. They won't give that food to their families. So they're making money, they're not making food. That's a big difference and a big lesson. They're not making food, they're making money, right? And they have to make money because they have loans from the government for the tractors, for the land, for the house, for insurance, for seed, right? Banks today will not give you a, a farmer a loan if he does not use F1 seed. So if I want to do organic cotton and I've got organic seed from Seeds of Life, the banks won't give you any money because you're not using fertilizer, you're not using insecticides, you're not using F1 seeds, so we don't know what your volume is going to be. So we're not going to give you any money. So we have to fund our own growing and our own farmers and our own seeds. And that's what we've done. So we've got to get people back to understanding that Food is not stuff, and seeds are not stuff. They're alive. They're living entities, and they're intelligent. Every year, a seed gathers intelligence about the weather, about water, about the bacteria. But the challenge is how to get people to understand that, how to get them to relate to it. We do workshops, we do uh, ateliers, we're training young farmers. We work in high schools, we do, we're in um, kindergartens. We started uh, seed libraries. We train people how to search for seeds, seed hunters, seed saving, how to save seeds, how to wash them, how to care for them, how to keep them, how to share them. We do seed exchanges. We work with companies from supermarkets to food production companies to fashion companies to organic cotton, and organic linen, etc. And every step along the way, it's an education. It's an education system to be shared with the customers. So the customers know what they're buying and know why they're doing it and why they're supporting you, you know? Um, I used to run a big outdoor sports company here that um, when, I took, when I took charge of it, nobody knew it in Japan. And it became the largest very successful outdoor sports company because 
the people inside the company developed their own common sense about what they were doing, why they were doing it, and what they wanted to do for the next generation. And use the, comp the corporate vehicle to do that. Use it as a vehicle to change society for the better for the next generation. And it can be done. That was the, the thing I learned from that uh, experience was, yeah, we can do it. The Organic Expo in Japan is a good example of how Japan has changed in the last two years. We started last year with 20,000 people attending and it was a mark to us that, oh wow, yeah, it's, it's now, it's now the time.